In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a waterfall chart with ChartJS. And you can see here, here we have what we call color-coded dependency. So if the chart or if the bar is going up, as you can see here, the value is 9 to 12, meaning it starts at 9 and ends at 12. And then here it starts at 12 and goes down to 6. And this it keeps on going. You can see that the color changes and this goes up again. And then here it goes down from 12 to 0. And then from 0 to 9, it becomes green again, and this is green as well. So these are color-coded dependencies based on a bar chart, which is quite interesting and very useful for a waterfall chart. So let's explore how to do this right now. In this video, we'll focus on how to create a waterfall chart in Chart.js. And this was one of my viewers' questions, which was from one of my other videos here, which was, which was about... Uh, creating a chart or chart as dynamic range input, which is quite interesting as well if you want to create a dynamic chart. All right, so in here, if I scroll down here, Rokibu Haig asked the following. Thanks for your quickest response and effort. It would be highly, or sorry, it would be very appreciated if you could make some rainfall chart tutorials. All right, so this is a rainfall chart tutorial. I was not certain if this was the case. It's a waterfall or rainfall charts, but I will be making them both, so you have them both just to be sure. All right, to start out, what we need to do is we need to go to the chartjs3.com getting started code. Just copy here the default code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, or specifically the JavaScript, please check out this video that explains it all. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to paste all of this in here, and basically we're going to well, first of all, we're going to cut out this title here. This is for my personal use. Save that. And then once we refresh here, we have now a very simple bar chart. What we're going to do now is, is convert this into a waterfall chart. And a waterfall chart works with floating bar charts. And this is built in, in Chart.js, so it's quite easy to do this. So once we are here, what we're going to do here is the following. We have the border width, which is fine. And then we have here skip border. And the reason I'm doing that is because we have these borders here below. I want them to be visible. So I say skip border equals false. Make sure you have a comma here. Save that. Refresh. All right. So you might not see them now. But once we are working with this, we're going to convert this now into a floating data point. So how do we do this? Well, basically here in the data, we have these brackets and within the brackets we put another bracket with the value and then you put a comma here every time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this paste this in here and we'll copy this multiple times well in total we have seven labels here so seven in total we should have seven items here so six more times we're going to copy it now we have in total of seven lines all right nice then what i'm going to do is i'm going to match these here so i will say here this is just hard coded for now Eventually, I might make one soft coded, but that's probably in the future. So we have this here. I'm going to match this all here with these numbers. So we have this will be 9, 9, and then we have this 12. This will be again 12. This will be number 3, and uh, this will be 9. And finally, here we should we can have 12, and I'll do it 12. This will be. 24. All right, so we have all the numbers in here. Save this, refresh. All right, let me double check what's going on here. We have a tiny mistake. So I'm going to check here what we have or what is the issue. Uh, unexpected identifier on number 65. All right, fair enough. A comma here. This comma is redundant. We don't have, don't have to put it here, but we have to put one here. Save that, refresh. And now, as you can see here, we have the border skipped. I was expecting uh, it should be showing. So, false, a border skip. That's false. Maybe it skipped border. Let me double check. All right. Apparently, it's just the exact opposite of what I expected. So, it's border skipped. Save that. There we are. So, now we have these lines here. You can see here this line now starts to match consistently with this and I realize that some of these are not correct so I'm going to check here what's going on here so we have this we started 12 and then all right this should be 3 and then we'll explain why I had something missing here so this should be 9 this should be 12 all right save that 
now we have this match in here of course you can see here and i understand that you might say wait a minute i see these colors here i don't want these colors i don't even want a solid color like this so let's say we want that one like this and i'm sure that you also don't want it like that because you only have one single color most important part in the waterfall chart is this when the value is going down we should have a matching color with that for example red when the value goes up like in this one here and here it goes down to six and then from six it goes up to nine as you can see same here then this block should be or the square should be green all right so we're going to work on that i'm going to use these codes here or these colors here for that so how to do this well to do this we need to work within the elements basically what we're going to pinpoint is this specific element here which is this square with these borders here all right so what we're going to do here is the following we will say here elements and uh, make sure you type it correctly elements and in the elements we're going to select what element we want well in this case we want these bars here so we say bar and then every bar will have the following code so we say here let's give it here background color and this background color will be a function so we can say here bar color code all right very simple same here maybe we have a border color and then we do the border color same i will just keep it same i will not spend much time on different things but once you understand how these functions work you could keep on doing it yourself and next what we could do in ever if ever we would like to have a uh border width we have here a border width we can move that we can put it in here so we can also control that in case necessary all right so we have this here then this will be redundant and same here i'm going to not remove this yet because i'm going to use the color codes in here so once we have this make sure you have a comma here because if you would look at it this the border skipped that's basically what we need the comma here all right save this refresh now of course it doesn't work because we didn't define yet the function so let's start to define the function i'm going to put the, the function below here above the config but below this data here all right so the reason why i'm doing that is because this here refers back to this and this would refer then to the function and then that and as at the same time also to this here so it's two at the same time so what we're going to do here is we're going to give it a function so i'm going to give this here a this would be the color code block all right or specifically bar color code function block here we say function bar uh, let's copy this here with capital letters this should be as well caps locks or capitalized letters on c and then here we put in the values so what are we going to do in here so we have here basically the following we're going to return a specific value with an if statement depending on the situation of our item here is it uh, going up or down so we're going to make that right now so we say return ctx because we're going to draw in the uh, canvas and this would be the statement or the if statement we're going to say here first of all i'm going to get a constant and this constant will be called start so what we're going to do here we're going to grab a certain value and let's see because i noticed that this here might give still some confusion yet uh well we can do it like this see if this starts to draw all right it starts to draw and that is important the reason why i want it drawn is because i want to use here the console log so i'm going to show you here something very important here you can see this is going more and more advanced we're going to use more and more within the charges functions or in the charges api to be specific save this refresh pay attention here i'm going to look at this you're going to see here so if i hover over this one the very last one or probably multiple times it loads it loads this specific element here all right so you can see your index data zero and an index zero which is correct because we only have one index data or data set and we have one and we highlighted or hover over the first one what we really want to do is here to get these values here you can see here the raw is interesting but the parse is the one we need specifically the parse then you can see here the x and the y value and the y is 18 so let's look at that 
the y is 18, the starting point is 18. And what we really want to do now is we want to compare this value with that one. Because if this value would be higher compared to this, it means that this block goes down. And you can almost imagine here the candlestick structure of a, if you are familiar with financial charts and candlestick charts. I have a video about that. You can search that as well. That one shows you as well, but that is based on a plugin. This is now basically how we code it ourselves. All right. But this is a waterfall because a waterfall is also dependent like that. But what I really need is the custom section. And then here, I want to figure out what is the starting point, which is number 18. And what is the ending point? And it's number 12. And now you can see if this is bigger than that, the color should be red. And if, if this is smaller than end, the color should be green. So that is our function here that we're going to make. Basically, it's an if statement. All right. So in here, we can see this here. So I'm going to say a dot. And then what we have to do is how to grab that is go to parse. And then parse, we go to underscore custom. And then we go end and start. So we say here, parse dot underscore custom dot start. All right. And then what I want to do is I want to copy that. And then I will paste it here and then say here, end. If I save this now and refresh, you can see we get the numbers. It starts at the default. And if we hover over the other one, 12, 6. What about this one? 6, 9, 6, 9, this one, 12, and then 3, there you are. You can see now, and this will give us all the answers we need. So what I want to do now here is this constant here. Constant start value equals this specific item. And then you can guess as well, we want as well the end value. So constant end would be this value. And we have that here, and now we can make our color if statement so we say here let and this let value will be the following we will say bar color very simple the bar color will be based on the following if start equals or is smaller or equal true to end meaning that if start is smaller that means that the ending value or an increase of value there's the increase in the bar chart or in the bar in that case, we are positive and we say green or specifically, I'm going to grab this color here. This is the bar chart or the greenish color. I like that color a lot. So I'm going to use that one. There we are. So, and if that is not the case, so we do here colon and then we say the following. If we're going to grab this again, we can basically copy the entire code here. And then we say here, if start is not is smaller always smaller if it's equal it still can be green so there's no real changes give it any color but that's fine then we say if start is bigger than end what we're going to do here is make this red so red means this color here copy that paste this in here there we are and then finally we have to have a default color which would be if any of these cases is not the case in that case we'll we'll just give it black well of course in our case we have no situation with that we always have a value that's higher or lower this would basically mean there would be a null value or something it couldn't read it in that case it wouldn't even show it in here it, then the chart will not show as well all right so we have this now and then we say here the following which is straightforward return bar color all right, so we have this semicolon here, and then we turn bar color. So the bar color here is this specific item. All right, now we have this. We can save this now and refresh. And you can see here now we have this nice reddish or pinkish, pinkish red color because we're going down here. Beautiful. And this is a nice waterfall chart. So let me do one more thing. So let's change this color or change the value here and see if the colors are changing. So if I make this 9, and I save this, this should change. There you are, and it becomes green. So let's change this one as well, 12 and 3. 12, and this would be, let's say, 10. And this will be also 10. I mean, we're going to match that one. If we save this, you can see this maintains, but it changes, and this matches as well. Beautiful. All right. So this is basically how you create a waterfall chart. And we can remove all of this code as well here. And 
this is quite fun as well. Of course, there's still other options. If you're interested in a line chart, I have another one as well that I highly recommend you to even look at. So I highly recommend if you are interested in color coding, try to export this one. This was absolutely fun because this one is also working with segments and elements. And here you can see the color code works as well, but then specifically on the line chart instead of the bar segments that we had so far. So the link will show up or pop up somewhere here right now. So you can click on it immediately to explore how to do that with a line chart.